So with MIDI, you can go from the secret of Monkey Island sounding like this to sounding like this. Hey guys, I just finished testing the latest version of DOSBox staging, one of many flavors of DOSBox, and specifically looking in audio, how do sound effects and music sound compared to the real thing? And yeah, I'm actually still processing what I found. So I think you will find this video really interesting. We have lots of audio recordings and I will give you my opinion at the end. Has DOSBox surpassed the real thing in terms of audio? There's a lot to cover, so I thought we are following a timeline. Let's start with the good old PC speaker. They have added some filters to provide a more pleasant and period correct experience. And you can even toggle between two types of filters. Apparently Commander Keen sounds a little bit too harsh with the default settings. Let's check out two games that only support the PC speaker. We have Xenon 2 and Mark 3. Get ready for Mac 3. Now the PC speaker sound is very basic, but a lot of games supported the Tandy, which has three voice audio. Now I'm from Europe. We didn't have Tandy computers in Europe. It was a computer in the North American market. I only saw the option in games when I ran the setup menu. And in the games that support Tandy three voice audio, the difference is actually quite noticeable. I have two examples for you. We have Space Quest and Zack McCracken. Next up, we have the CMS or Game Blaster. This was Creative Labs sound card before their Sound Blaster. And here we have a Sound Blaster 2. There are two sockets and you can upgrade two chips, which will give you CMS slash Game Blaster compatibility. And it gives you a really warm, fuzzy, retro feeling with stereo. I have two recordings for you. We have Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and The Secret of Monkey Island. The CMS or Game Blaster has very harsh stereo, similar to the Amiga. The voices that play on the left side play 100% on the left side and there's nothing being heard on the right side and vice versa. If you're listening with headphones, that can be a little bit too much and after a while you might get a feeling of, yeah, sort of a headache or just a feeling, a sense of that's getting a little bit too much. DOSBox staging has a setting for crossfeed. So that means you can have the left channel bleed a little bit into the right channel, making it sound a little bit more pleasant. You can configure it with a percentage. So let's listen to the difference.
And next up, we talk about what most of you are familiar with, the Adlib Sound or FM, Yamaha, Opel 2 or Opel 3. Now, with real sound cards, yeah, it's a minefield. Uh, many cards do have authentic Yamaha chips on them and sound really nice, but there are also many sound cards that have clone chips and they can sound from extremely horrible to, yeah, not too bad. So you need to pay uh, particular attention what sort of sound card you're using in your retro gaming PC. DOSBox staging supports nuked OPL. This is a bit accurate OPL3 emulator and sounds absolutely lovely. Here we have a recording of Lemmings and The Secret of Monkey Island 2. Those of you who have been following me for a while know that I really love the Sound Blaster AW64 Gold. In fact, this is what I have in my main DOS retro gaming PC. One highlight of this card is the ability to apply chorus and reverb to the FM audio with a percentage from 0 to 100. DOSBox staging lets you do the same thing. Here you can see me adjusting the reverb and chorus with the mixer command and I have some recordings for you. Let's see what difference it makes. So setting chorus and reverb to 100 is probably too much. but somewhere between 30 and 60 gives you just a nicer sound experience. And in my opinion, it elevates the original FM audio, making it a little bit more interesting. There are many flavors of the Sound Blaster. For example, the original Sound Blaster with a Yamaha OPL2 and only mono sound. And later we got the Sound Blaster Pro. But did you know there are two versions? The original Sound Blaster and the Sound Blaster Pro 2. Now the original Sound Blaster is really hard to find. It's a collector's item now. And the highlight is it has two Yamaha OPL2 chips and it can produce stereo FM music in a few select games. So let's listen how Ultima Underworld and Space Quest 3 sound on the Sound Blaster 1 with beautiful FM stereo music. The beauty of DOSBox staging is that you can just configure what Sound Blaster you want. Sound Blaster 1, Sound Blaster Pro, the first one, the second one, Sound Blaster 16. Just change the configuration file. You can even do it on the fly from the command line, so the flexibility is amazing. We also have support for the Graphis Ultrasound, and the highlight back in the day was that it could do hardware mixing. So you could have 44 kilohertz samples on a 386, and that was quite different. The Sound Blaster had to do it in software. Here we have Epic Pinballs, a good showcase for the Graphis Ultrasound, and it sounds really high quality.
We will talk about MIDI soon, but DOSBox staging supports a few quite exotic sound devices that I don't own and I have now the opportunity to check him out. The first one is support for Adlib Gold, including the very rare and sought after surround module. And apparently there's only one game that supports this technology. It is uh, Dune, so let's listen to it. So that sounds really good with some rich stereo FM music. There's another exotic sound card that I've never experienced. It is the Innovation SID 2001. This is basically the SID chip from the Commodore 64 on a PC sound card. And yeah, to be honest, uh, to me it's a bit weird hearing Commodore 64 music in a PC game. But yeah, make up your mind. Here we have Ultima 6 with the Innovation SID 2001. DOSBox staging also has support for these parallel port sound devices like the Kovox Speech Thing and the Disney Sound Source. And now let's talk about MIDI. And this is where PC gaming really shows what it can do. And Roland has a big part to play here. In the late 80s, they launched a D50 synthesizer and the Roland MT32 sort of has some of that DNA in a compact MIDI device. And it was mostly Sierra with other companies following that started to support the Roland MT32 in DOS games. DOSBox staging has the MUNT emulator integrated. You just need to put the ROM files in a specific directory and let's listen to a few games, how they sound with the Roland MT32. So that sounds absolutely amazing and it was really at this stage in history that PC DOS gaming was absolutely beautiful. Now it was expensive but these days we can replicate the experience basically for free. And it was also the time where gaming started to become better on the PC compared to home computers. Now with the Roland MT32 there's a lot more to talk about. Specifically a while later Roland launched the CM devices, stands for computer music. And here we have the CM32L. And the main difference is it supports 33 extra sound effects. And there are many games that were developed with a CM module, which means you get sound effects if you have a CM module, but if you're playing on a Roland MT32, you will not get those sound effects. It will be very void and the game feels a little bit empty and bland. Here we have a good example. This is Elite Plus 
Let's compare how it sounds on the MT32 compared to the CM32L. So Elite Plus is a pretty extreme experience with most sound effects not being audible on the Roland MT32. There are other examples like Ultima Underworld where you don't hear the water effects and there are even more subtle differences. LucasArts for example, and many are not aware of this, used Roland uh, CM devices to compose their music in games. And the differences are really subtle, especially in sound effects. Here we have a recording of Monkey Island 2 and I will uh, first play how it sounds on the CM32L. The sound effects sound a little bit richer and then we switch to the MT32. We still get the sound effect, which is good, at least we get to hear something, but the sound effects sound like a, yeah, uh, a lesser version of what you hear on the CM. Sometime in the early 90s, General MIDI was the next standard for MIDI and there are lots of MIDI devices and there's one I recommend which is the Roland Sound Canvas. I'm a little bit biased, firstly I grew up with the Sound Canvas, I had the Wavetable module, module on a Sound Blaster 16 but I also believe that most games sound most natural and balanced on a sound canvas. Now you can experiment with other MIDI modules and uh, no doubt some games will sound uh, better and richer but sooner or later I usually run into a situation where I'm listening to the game and it just sounds a little bit off. So that's why I recommend if you want a single MIDI device for your retro gaming PC go with a Roland sound canvas. For DOSBox, Roland sells a software synthesizer, the Roland Sound Canvas VA. It's quite expensive and you get a lifetime uh, key. Who knows how long that actually lasts, but so far it's been good. I've activated it on many computers. It's a little bit convoluted to hook it up to DOSBox. I've done a video on that on the, in the past, but when it's up and running, it sounds really lovely. If you're a fan of Yamaha, you can also get a software synthesizer and connect it to DOSBox and especially in Descent, the Yamaha synth sounds a little bit better and more interesting.
But like I said, it depends a lot on the game, your preferences and what you grew up with back in the day. If you want to experiment with other sound fonts beyond Roland and Yamaha, DOSBox Staging has Fluid Synth integrated. It's a software synthesizer and you can load sound fonts in the SF2 format and well, there are so many to choose from. Here we have a recording of Doom with the Arachno sound font. So we covered a lot of ground and this is really the highlight of DOSBox. It supports so many different uh, sound options and it's really flexible. It also has a really nice mixer integrated that you can configure. You can even toggle the output filters and force a filter to stay uh, in a certain mode because some games actually toggle the filter for you, which is something you might not like. Uh, but that's really nitty gritty stuff for uh, some of us out there that really care about such details. So let's answer the question, is DOSBox better than the real thing when it comes to audio? If we look at the number of supported devices, if you have a real retro gaming PC and you wanna uh, accumulate all these options, well, good luck to you. Firstly, you will have to spend a lot of money. And secondly, some of these devices are just not available. Uh, I would say you have to pay ten thousands of dollars uh, to really collect everything and have all the different variations and DOSBox I really like the flexibility with a single device a single computer on the fly in many situations you can switch between uh, the sound options on the real retro gaming PC it's a real pain in the neck many of you out there have multiple sound cards in a computer which is a configuration nightmare if you like MIDI devices, you end up with a MIDI tower, you need a MIDI switch, an audio mixer, all sorts of gear. So in many aspects, yes, I actually feel that DOSBox is better compared to the real thing when it comes to audio. One area where the real thing is of course better is that uh, feeling of nostalgia, turning on your retro PC, seeing the CRT monitor, having your MIDI and sound card device in real hardware and the sound might not be as clean and not as, as perfect as under DOSBox, but that is also, uh, yeah, part of the experience of having real retro hardware. In terms of recommendations for improvements, there's really not much I can recommend. The only thing that I wish is a, an external mixer that you can use live while running, playing your games, so you can adjust the speech with the music um, without having to run the game, quit, change the mixer settings, run the game again. So that would be a really nice addition. So there you have it. We had a look at the latest version of DOSBox staging and the audio support is just terrific. If you're interested in how the graphics look compared to a CRT monitor, I covered that in a recent video. I'll put a card on the screen for you to check out. And that's it for this video, guys. Really eager to hear from you. What is your take on audio with the real retro PC and compared to DOSBox, especially MIDI and costs of acquiring some of these devices? Would love to hear from you. And as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give it a like, share the video with your friends and I shall see you soon with another one.